Um, well, let's get started. It's it's six thirty. So um, thank you very much to everyone who has joined this first in the series glass with our grower for private seller. Um, I couldn't be more delighted to have Max Seychell um, on with us tonight. Um, he is joining us straight from Bordeaux, so he's going to be giving us um, some, well, talking us through some delicious wines, which hopefully you, you all have, um, and also giving us the inside scoop on all things Bordeaux. Uh, the session is being recorded. Um, I hope that's okay. If, um, if anyone wants to see it afterwards or anyone has a problem, please do let us know. Um, so first, first and foremost, a huge welcome and thank you again for joining and taking part in this. We have done this as a webinar format um, in just because it's easier for people to be able to hear what Max is saying um, and what I'm saying. And there's no dogs barking in the background or children or anything like that. But please don't misunderstand us. It doesn't mean that we don't want to hear what you have to say. So if you have any questions, please do pop them in the Q&A. Um, which you should have um, along the bottom of your screen. And we'll endeavour to come to them before the session's out. It might not be that we'll answer them straight away, but when there's an appropriate time, I'll, I'll come on to them. Um, and we'll we'll definitely try and help, we, help you with that. So this session should be about three quarters of an hour long. We'll try not to go over. Um, and let's get started, shall we? I think to begin with, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Letty Farden. I've been working for Private Seller now for coming up to four years. Um, I'm also studying for my Master of Wine um, in trying to follow in the footsteps of Nicola with my fellow student, Laura Taylor, who also works for Private Seller. Um, and I'm really excited to be doing this. Um, Max has very kindly prepared a presentation and perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself, Max, and, and give us a little bit of an introduction into your sure. family and your fabulous wine business. Thank you very much, Letty, and uh, thank you for organising this. It's a great opportunity, uh, you know, to, to spread the word uh, and, uh, yeah, it's very, very important for, for me and for, for Sichel. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, uh, I wanted to make it very easy, relaxed. So if you have any questions at any moment, please uh, drop us along and we'll uh, try to answer uh, as best as we can. Actually, I should uh, also add on the um, on the line of it being very easy and very relaxed, please do feel free to pop your corks and pour yourself a glass while we're talking about the history um, and background of Bordeaux. So please do, don't, don't wait for us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so yes, I, I'm uh, Max uh, Sichel from uh, uh, Maison Sichel and from the Sichel uh, family. Um, I started uh, 10 years ago. I actually produced wine for the family. Uh, started with, um, it was a hard vintage, I have to say. It was uh, 2013 and uh, produced once and my family said, Max, um, we'll move you to the sales side because <laughs> <laughs> um, for my defense it was a very hard vintage 2013, uh, 2013 um, and we actually didn't release the wine I produced only the whites were really good uh, but uh, no it was it was really quite difficult quite difficult in Bordeaux in 2013 um, so, so that was 10 years ago I then moved on the sales uh, side of the business um, started um, selling wine in Bordeaux, in restaurants, hotels, wine shops, uh, then in Paris, and then uh, sold in, um, in the UK market. So I'm on the U in the UK market. I'm on the UK market since 2017, always based uh, in Bordeaux, um, and uh, so traveling quite regularly uh, to the UK to try and promote my wines and uh, voila. So um, shall we start with the presentation of uh, Yes, absolutely. Sujen? Yes, please. I know there's yeah. some fabulous pictures coming up, so please do. So I'm going to share the screen. Uh, so can you see it? Yes, it's is, very is it clear. working. Brilliant. Perfect. So. Maison Seychelles. So Seychelles. Seychelles is um, a family business which started in 1883. 
And in 1883, you were setting wine all around the world, um, mainly Bordeaux wines. And um, what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to uh, become uh, experts in uh, in uh, in Bordeaux wines, and um, it's it's um, it's um, we started in 1883 as typical wine merchants, négociants from Bordeaux, as we you know the, the name négociant is quite famous in Bordeaux. It's basically uh, buying Bordeaux uh, chateaus and selling them all around the world. Um, and uh, in uh, so. It's family business since 1883. Seven generations have been uh, working uh, through uh, seashell, the middle seashell history, and nine seashells are in the business today. Fantastic. So this is a picture they, uh, actually of the uncles, my uncles, who are still in the business today, all working for middle seashell. Um, and actually one, the only one working, actually the only one digging is um, Ben, who actually is producing uh, Chateau Angledin. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, so, so he's the one with his foot on the spade, is he? Oh, on the foot. Uh, so that's Ben. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 1883, Working as a team since 1883, um, still so selling Bordeaux wines all over the, all over the world, and by at that time uh, we were um, we didn't really produce wine anymore, and that's what that was very important for my great grandfather. He really wanted to control everything from A to Z, and in uh, 1938. Uh, he had an amazing opportunity to buy shares in Chateau Palmer. Uh, Chateau Palmer uh, is a third classified growth um, in uh, Margot, in the Margot region, which is a small region in Bordeaux. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the jewel of the family. In 1938, he, this, he had, everybody knew there was the Second World War coming. And um, it was a big, he really, he, he, he thought it would be a very good uh, move. And mm. uh, three of his friends uh, thought the same. And with the four friends managed to buy Chateau Palmer in 1938. Fantastic. Then the, the you know, the, the, the Germans invaded uh, France, they invaded the Chateau, lived in the Chateau actually. And uh, but didn't damage the chateau nor the vines. They drank a lot of bottles, but um, thank God they didn't damage anything. Mm. Um, and uh, throughout the years, my the, the family invested a lot in the vineyard, in the cellar, and tried to produce uh, a, yeah a very a very good wine from uh, Macro. Well, We're I very think happy that would be I think that would be too. pretty universally agreed with as well, Max. <laughs> You're doing a good <laughs> <Thank> job <you>. there. <laughs> And um, after 1938 with Chateau Palmer, um, we, um, my family, so my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, Peter and Diana Sichel, uh, managed uh, to buy Chateau Angredou in 1961, which is uh, in the heart of the Appellation with 32 uh, hectares in front of the chateau. And mm. that's where the, the Chateau Angredou is really the, the heart of the family. That's where we. Uh, gather uh, at weekends. That's where we grew up. That's where we uh, we love to to be. Um, and you know, it's it's quite special for the Seychelles family. So, if you um, if you think about Seychelles, it's really related to Margot, Margot, the left bank region with Palmer and Angoulé, and that's where we come from. Um, in uh, in two thousand and two. We had a great opportunity to buy uh, Chateau Argelins, which is one of the highest vineyards uh, in uh, in Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. So you'll tell me Bordeaux is you know it's not a mountain uh, region; uh, it's uh, it's uh, quite flat, but you can find some well, steep hills in in, mm. in Bordeaux too. Mm. 
and at uh, Chateau Arguedas, so we are at 110 meters of uh, altitude. Mm -hmm. And just to put you in the picture, so this is the map of uh, France. Yeah. Uh, we are in the southwest. So can you see my mouth and uh, my mouse? Yes, you yeah. can. Alors, we are here. This is the southwest of France. And Margot is here on the left bank. And then we move south. You have the city, the city of Bordeaux here, really in the middle of uh, all the, 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 the vineyards. And here, just here, you have Chateau Arguedas, okay. not far from Sotheam. The yellow is oh, Sotheam. Okay. Yeah. And here, uh, uh, pale green uh, is where we are at Arguedas. Super. So in, in the Entre de Mer region. Yeah. So between so, the Baron and the Dordogne rivers. Exactly. So just to give you an example, how high is, is the vineyard, um, you have, we are, so at 110 meters of altitude, which is as high as the Dune du Pilat. I don't know if you know the Dune du Pilat, it's, it's a, a sand uh, dune uh, on the coast, uh, which is uh, uh, and, uh, up to 115 meters of altitude. And, um, and, and that's where we are, which is very, very good uh, for the vineyard. Mm. I'll explain. Especially in why. the recent hot years, I'd imagine, oh. which we'll come on to later. Uh, hot and not only, uh, also for the frost, for yeah, uh, of course. Uh, uh, harvest vintages uh, can be very good too. Yeah. So this is how high is the Dune du Pilat. This is a picture mm. of the Dune du Pilat. So it shows you how high it can, it can get. Um, it is an amazing thing, isn't it? And it, I know that it's moving between yeah. five and 10 meters every year as well, which yes. just makes it sound yeah, like yeah. some kind of sand monster. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite impressive and quite nice to see, uh, actually. So if you come down to Bordeaux, I think it, it's definitely worth it, especially that this region <laughs> is a very nice region for you know to sightsee on the coast and yeah. Brilliant. So if we go inland uh, for an hour, a bit more than an hour, we arrive here, which is Chateau Arguedas. This is the landscape of Chateau Arguedas. So quite hilly, and we are at the dock here, we are at 110 meters of altitude which uh, helps us enormously um, because uh, we have a great exposure, a southern exposure, uh, a very good drainage, and we have constant wind in the vineyard. So, uh, and this constant wind really helps us to clean the vineyard. So, it's especially in 2018, where uh, we had a quite a big uh, mildew pressure mm. uh, in Bordeaux, uh, which is um, a fungus that develops when, in the, especially in the Bordeaux region, when uh, you have uh, humidity and uh, warm temperatures, quite high temperatures. Uh, it really happens around uh, May till uh, beginning of July. Um, and this uh, mildew pressure uh, really comes when you have to humidity and uh, mm. warm weather and if uh, all if, if you have wind to dry the vineyard it helps enormously mm. so we for example we don't have to spray any chemicals uh, well we, we don't use any um, chemicals we use only natural products and um, and it helps us enormously and for the frost too being at that height really helps us against the frost yeah, we of course, been and planting the vines on the slope so you have the airflow encouraged and moving through the canopy. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. You can see how that's making a big difference. So it does, it does uh, help a lot. Um, so Chateau Arguedas uh, is uh, basically, it's a, a 40 hectare vineyard at 110 metres of altitude in the, in the Entre de Mer region, where we produce uh, mainly red wine, and we have a little selection of white, um, which is limited to three hectares. Fantastic. Um, so 37 hectares of red uh, with mainly Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, 
and the white is mainly Sauvignon Blanc with a bit of Sauvignon. And at Argedas, what we are trying to do is, um, you know, we, we benefit from all our experience at, from Chateau Palmer and uh, Chateau Anglude, and which are both biodynamic, uh, biodynamic, biodynamic uh, vineyards. Um, and we uh, believe that um, increasing the biodiversity uh, at Arcadence will help us to create a balanced uh, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've opted to go through the HVE uh, um, environmental uh, practices. We'll maybe talk uh, about this. Yeah, afterwards. let's come on to that um, when we're tasting the wines, um, if that's uh, okay with you, because like, yes, it's of, really, of, really interesting. And I'm sure that it's of course. one of the topics everyone's super keen to cover. And it's uh, uh, trying to be as sustainable, uh, the best sustainable uh, well, way uh, in every part of uh, of uh, of um, the producing wine. It's not only in the vineyard; it's in the. Uh, we'll talk about that afterwards. Brilliant. But at Argenas, what we want to do is really create, uh, bring back life uh, in the vineyard, because for many years in Bordeaux, um, from I would say from the yeah, maybe seventies up to the uh, early two thousands. Mm. Uh, we've seen ocean of vines, ocean of vines, where you could only see vines and not a single tree. And uh, and and gradually, we uh, we are you know we are uh, we are in the early in the early two thousand. We realised that the environment which is so important to produce yeah, vines. Absolutely, and that's what we are trying to do at Akinas for oh, uh, yeah nearly twenty years now. Bring back life in the vineyard with. We have a norco, we have a vegetable garden, we have uh, uh, we have uh, chickens uh, everywhere, we have beehives where we produce our own uh, uh, honey. Uh, oh, well, by the way, this is the this is our team. <laughs> we have the chickens, we have a cow. I hope that you're have... paying them the minimum wage, Max. They <laughs> have, they're working very hard. <laughs> well, they, they they occasionally eat grapes, so uh... <laughs> keep a close eye on them. I understand. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Um... And uh, so, yeah, that's all part of it. Bring back life in the vineyard. Love um, that. Oh, yeah, so that we can see our, uh, that's our Fantastic. beehive uh, with the, uh, our own honey and um, everyone else. That's so shall we, shall we talk about the wines? And, yes, uh, I think and so. I'm too? certainly starting to feel quite thirsty. So I think we should, without yeah. further ado, crack on. Um, okay. I, I was going to suggest that we start with the white, unless you'd prefer to start with the red. Is that okay? Yeah, that's Brilliant. Perfect, yeah. So, um, Bordeaux Blanc. Very exciting. Bordeaux Blanc, exactly. <laughs> so, um, I always think it's interesting that, um, well, certainly I remember when I first started learning about wine, um, I didn't really think there was much to Bordeaux other than red wine. And in fact, it was as recently as the 1960s that more than half of Bordeaux was was white anyway what was harvested yes exactly it's really yeah, nice to be doing it today because I, I know i think about eight percent of the total harvest is now white and it's this is coming yeah. from your three hectares so what yeah. a joy to be able to share this with you today thank you thank you no it's a very limited production um we're very happy with uh chateau Arcadence. um what we what we try to do and as you said you know it's um Bordeaux used to produce much more whites than reds, but Bordeaux is now producing more and more whites, even mm. though reds are it's, it's dominating the market. But we have exceptional value, good value in, in Bordeaux for whites uh, as mm. well as reds. Um, I think if you're, bu if you're buying towards the lower end of the scale and you don't have a lot of money in your pocket for any, you know, for a weekday wine or something buying a, a kind of entry-level Bordeaux Blanc is quite a safe bet whereas I'd be wanting to spend a little bit more money if I was buying a red I think I think that's a good point yeah I, I think uh, I do I do agree on that because of um, you know whites uh, aren't as famous as reds uh, in Bordeaux uh, today 
Um, but you know, they're slowly uh, yeah, gaining, gaining markets, and uh, and production is getting better and better. And we and the quality. I mean, the quality actually, in the yeah. last decade has really uh, increased. Well, our, um, one of my colleagues um, actually asked me to ask you about that. Um, uh, Nick was saying that he has noticed a a real uptick in quality as well, and he was wondering whether. Um, he thinks that there'll be more Bordeaux Blanc planted in the future in better vineyard spaces. Yes, 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 for sure. Um, because uh, for, you know, um, I think back in the days, the, the whites were produced uh, more as a consommation and not as yeah. a fine, uh, fine, mm. you know, fine wines. And there are really, really special terroir produced amazing whites which can uh, last actually for decades and mm. decades and decades so there is a special terroir in Bordeaux today to, uh, to produce a very fine uh, um, Bordeaux whites and um, it, well, so it's, it's something to watch so this, this white so, is very very special what can you tell us about this what's so, the what's the blend to start with chapter, Chateau Argas is, is um, so a blend of uh, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. Uh, what we wanted to do with Argas is to produce uh, a balanced white wine uh, that reflects the Bordeaux identity. Uh, Bordeaux is mainly uh, planted with Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a, a bit of a Semillon too. The Semillon is more used for the, the sweet wines, the Sauternes. Uh, for example, um, and uh, but in Bordeaux, the Sauvignon Blanc gives uh, a lot of um, uh, freshness in the wine, mm. a lot of uh, agrumes, uh, uh, citrusy, citrusy fruits, um, and a, a good freshness, vibrant and, and crispy crispiness. Whereas the Sauvignon in Bordeaux will give a more a floral oh, notes. Max, more can you take your slides fruits. down so that we can see more of oh, you? Oh, sure. <laughs> that uh, still on small. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Wow. Thank you. That's yeah. great. <laughs> and um, so, um, so yes, yeah, so, so the Sauvignon will bring all the freshness, well, mainly the freshness in the wine, all the citrusy fruits, the crispiness. Mm. Um, and we like to balance this with, uh, by, by blending the wine with a bit of Sauvignon, which will give more floral notes. Um, exotic fruits and will bring a bit more roundness to the wine. I so definitely have... noticed that on the tasting. Mm. It's the Sauvignon jumps out on the nose mm. and it's super fresh and mm. citrusy, as you say. And then I get a really nice kind of um, a bit more weight and and texture on the palate, which is definitely you know that kind of lovely waxiness that you get from Sauvignon. It's really exactly. really satisfying. So it's a sixty five percent Sauvignon Blanc, mainly Sauvignon Blanc with brought by 35% of Sémillon to round it up and make it uh, yeah, well-balanced and easy to drink. I think it's quite Lovely. expressive on the nose or two. I mean, this has got a, a lot to it as well. I noticed that, um, well, I, I think you do a little bit of Lee stirring as well, which is giving mm. it that little bit more weight and texture um, and presumably meaning it will, I, I, I don't know, I presume this is a young wine, but I think it would just get a bit more honeyed if you left it for a few years. It's not going anywhere yes is it? no it's not and um, i think as yes, you know using the leaves really also helps um to age the wine um and giving it a bit more uh, texture and uh it helps also preventing from uh the oxidation yeah absolutely. of the wine so it's very important for 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 us and you can age a chateau hagenas wine quite well actually mm. uh, the other day i had a 17 which was delicious. Just oh, good. So good to nice know. To drink. Really so nice buy a case. Drink. Here's a top tip. Buy a case and put it away for a few years and then it will be, it sounds and like that. I can imagine that will be really nice, actually. Yeah. What would you, um, Max, in an ideal world, um, sorry to do this so close to dinner, everyone, but I always think people are keen to know what you would like to, if, it, if you were pairing this with food, what would you cook? Um, well, I, I really... Uh, uh, I would I like it as an aperitif, first of all, uh, as a glass like this, as an aperitif, 
Uh, but also with um, I'm a, I'm an Italian food fan, uh, so I would definitely go with uh, pasta uh, with a creamy, um, lovely, yeah, maybe carbonara, a nice cream. carbonara, Italian way of making carbonara uh, with uh, chateau argenas. I think that could pair very well. Um, nice. but it goes very well with oysters too yeah um, and uh, and a few cheeses too actually nice oh that's lovely well I think it's re it's showing really really nicely and it's great to be able to taste it with you I haven't seen any I haven't seen any questions popping up um but if anyone feels that they want to ask anything then please do um mm. lovely though absolutely delicious shall we oh, thank you. shall we move on to the red sure let's do it, let's do it. Um, so, and perhaps before we taste the red um i would love to hear a little bit more about um when we were discussing this webinar coming up every almost um the, the most popular question by far which is a huge buzzword in the uk is what are you doing about sustainability um and i know you touched on that before with the um hve but perhaps for those who aren't familiar mm -hmm. you could just explain the key principles of that and and how it's being applied in reality in the vineyard so there's um in Bordeaux there's a, a lot going on in sustainability for um a, a few uh, years and a decade I would say Bordeaux has really reinvented itself in, in the mm. um and to be the most sustainable possible yeah, it seems to me, and perhaps I don't know whether this is your experience, but it feels like as the new generation, such as yourselves, are coming sure. through, there's a real hunger and this uh, this desire to be looking after the environment in a way which um, it's definitely helping, definitely mm. helping with the, the younger generation coming through and maybe um, more, uh, yeah, maybe more sensible to the environment. Um, yeah it's definitely helping um and uh, so we we strongly believe that uh sustainability is uh the key to produce uh, great wines um it's uh at Argenas, so we are in hve which is haute valeur uh, environmentale mm -hmm. level three there's several levels okay is level so three the top uh, level or it's the top top level and Argadas was one of the first actually in Bordeaux to be HBV level three. Fantastic. And um and uh, so it's uh, in English I would say high environmental value. Value, yeah. Well, and so it's um if if it's not as well known as uh, uh organic or biodynamic because it's uh, a much newer um a, a certification mm. uh, for example organic uh well biodynamic started in the in the early uh, um, uh, 20th century in uh, 1924 started the biodynamic organic started in 1985 so these two words are quite well known so people can identify themselves to these Whereas HVE is started in 2012. It's a yeah. new thing. But what is very good with HVE is that it englobes everything in the property. So uh, there are four uh, really uh, big uh, subjects in H mm -hmm. uh, HVE. It's yeah. first of all uh, the biodiversity. Yeah. Uh, biodiversity so you have to increase constantly increase the biodiversity uh, in order to um, try and build a, a, a balanced ecosystem mm -hmm. and that's what we do at uh, Argonas we have uh, uh, we have uh, we plant we have a vegetable garden we planted uh, edges we have a orchard with fruit trees mm -hmm. uh, beehives and a bat uh, bat to houses Fantastic. Uh, and that's, we want to increase this biodiversity mm. uh, at Argenas. And that's I, I was part. listening to, um, I, I learned a great fact, um, which apologies if you've already heard it, but um, this biodiversity just, it's hard to measure specifics, but it all affects, it all affects everything. So for example, 
um when you're introducing bats and you create bat houses at vineyards like like you guys are doing the a bat can eat 600 <laughs> grape moths in a night 600 um and then go on to do so the next night if they choose and and these are all preventing things like gray rot and the cap caterpillars eating the leaves and doing lots of damage so it's um exactly it's all really important S max just quickly so, i've got a question yes, for you sure. while we're talking about the vineyard um I, when we haven't touched on it yet what soils are there across your vineyards so it's a mainly uh limestone and clay clay and limestone at the chateau Argelas. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a little bit of uh, uh gravel but it's mainly uh clay and limestone brilliant so it's a uh, yeah it's a clay and limestone really helps uh, especially uh with uh, the 2022 vintage Mm. to retain a bit more uh, water in the, yeah in the soil. absolutely absolutely um, um shall we taste this so, one and then perhaps we could sure, talk sure. a little bit about well would yeah. you mind this is we've got the 2017 i don't know if um if you can remember if you can remember what that was like and you could give us a quick insight into the vintage and then well, 2017 um was um do i have to be uh uh honest it was a um, difficult uh, vintage for volume mm. quality was... was good but we frosted uh, really really badly uh, oh. at uh, for example not at Arcadas because we are at 110 meters of altitude which is good mm. so we considered the Arcadas 17 like uh, good but Angoudé for example we lost 95 percent on the crop Mm. Um, so in our mind, uh, 17 is uh, always very hard. A uh, frostbitten year, yeah, absolutely. Very hard. Um, we but the wines which were example. made were very good, um, if not yes. affected by frost. Exactly. Not uh, so uh, very well balanced. Uh, uh, not massive wines, but very fine and elegant wines. And yeah. very nice to drink, uh, you know, start drinking now yeah, for absolutely. the next five to ten years. Um, very pleasant, actually, today. I would it's, rather open a 17 today rather than an 18, 19 or... It's or, lovely. Uh, I think it's else. showing really nicely. And actually, one of the questions I was going to ask you is how, how you're making it so accessible for such easy and early drinking. It's just, it is a really pleasing uh, wine. Yes, it is. It is. You know, um, we what we want to do with uh, Arganas is uh, to really to show uh, the identity of uh, a Bordeaux wine, um, and we really want to respect that. So, not overpowering the wine with too much oak. Mm. Really, we really want to show um, our terroir, the fruit uh, through the Cabernet Sauvignon and the Merlot uh, that we use, Cabernet mm. Franc and Merlot that we choose. And um, it's, yeah, we're very happy with the, the, the concentration mm. of the wine. We're very I, think the, I think the way you've done the oak is really interesting because obviously as a, as a Bordeaux Superior, you, are, you, have to, you have to use wood. But the way that you've done it, I think Nicola wrote in mm. our new list, which has just been published, that it has a, um, a distinct grown up cedar note, which I think is a really nice way to say this kind of this light touch oaky spice, which is just really nicely in balance with the wine it's we we try to integrate it in the wine with uh with yeah you know integrate it without overpowering everything anything mm. but really integrate it with the fruit with the so freshness what's, of the what wine what kind of wood uh, are you using in the winery so it's a wooden uh, uh, barrels uh, oak french oak only uh and they are one year old um, okay so it's just so, taking the edge off rather than it being new. It's exactly. Really nice. we, we don't use new oak because uh, we we think it really um, it could bring a bit too much oak and too much yeah. body to the to the wine. We yeah. want to really to keep it uh, simple, well balanced, and uh, easy uh, to understand and enjoyable. You know, mm. pleasing, really easy to drink. I think and, that's. Uh, I think you've definitely. Um, I think you've definitely ticked that box. And is it being made, the, the fermentation's happening in, in big stainless steel vats, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Only, Are you only controlling the, steel. keeping the temperature down or what, is it kind of a cooler ferment or quite a warm traditional Bordeaux ferment? Oh no, it's uh, quite um, uh, cold, I would say. Um, uh, 
Well, we believe that uh, with the, uh, we want to, we do, we do um, uh, call maceration for the beginning to, yeah. to bring to out the, the, perfume. The, 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 yeah, the perfume. We can mm. actually, I can really have this perfume that's very uh, fruity and floral too, perfume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is very pleasant, and then it's uh, and then it goes up a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, for the fermentation temperatures yeah. go up, and uh, voila. Because so, the fruit's very precise, though it's really really nice. I think it's um, yes. I, I, I think I think it's very fruit forward, very mm -hmm. fruity, and we we can smell a little bit of oak, but it's really just fine and uh, elegant, and I think it's. Uh, I think it's a good balance. Mm. And this is about um, sixty percent Merlot. Um, yes, so 60, sixty-three uh, percent Merlot, and then uh, thirty-seven uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, perfect. And have you? Are you, have you guys? Are you experimenting with any of the new permitted grape varieties? So yes, we are. Um, so since what well, it's been what a few years now, four years. Actually, sorry, uh, I should just quickly explain for those who don't know the um, uh, the the main organisational viticultural organisational body in Bordeaux have permitted um, a, a few. I think after a, a trial of fifty two grape varietals, they permitted a handful to be able to be planted. Um, I think at t in ten percent of the vineyard, which can then be used for five percent of the blend. Um, exactly. And this is what Max is talking about. <laughs> Carry on, Max. Uh, so it's it's great variety, but it's basically to, to fight against the climate change because um, we are affected by the climate change. Uh, we we are seeing the alcohol uh, level going up, going up, going up, and the maturity mm -hmm. um, bring uh, well, it's uh, bringing it forward. And uh, the uh, we need to find great varieties to. You know, with slower maturations uh, to maintain uh, uh, alcohol mm -hmm. level around between 13, 12, 13 degrees. Yeah. As it used to be, really. As it used to be, as it yeah. used to be. Um, and uh, so we now are allowed to use six new grape varieties. And a few of these are um, uh, southland. Uh, southern French grape varieties, or even uh, Southern Europe grape yeah. varieties, because we've got like Marcelin and Tarriga yes. Nationale, which most of you will know from Port, of course. Exactly, which are very uh, they are they mature very slowly, and are very daddy, as we say here uh, in Bordeaux in France. Um, so uh, we with these grape varieties, we can really control the alcohol mm. and, and not be. Uh, too badly affected by uh, uh, the, the climate change. Fantastic. So we, so we, we, we might also start to see some of these in your wines then. In yes, we, we planted some Casté. Cool. Uh, Casté. So we, we, we're not, uh, we haven't planted Tourigue Nationale or anything like that because we, uh, we wanted to keep uh, a Bordeaux tradition uh, and uh, we preferred to use Casté, which yeah. was produced in Bordeaux yeah. many, many years ago. Fantastic. Um, and so that's what we planted recently. And we're very, very happy how, how it's going. It's still very, very young. We're not putting yeah. it in the, in the wine yet. But um, we're very happy how the vines are growing. And it's, they are actually, it's actually fitting with our, my, our um, uh, view of being uh, sustainable. Mm. And uh, because the casting uh, is, um, can, really protect himself again the mildew the mm. oidium it's much more resistant uh, against the, these diseases because obviously in which, 2018 yeah. and 20 there was real problems with mildew oh uh, yeah 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 massive problems so you had to well uh, you had to go in the vineyards mm. very very often to spray uh um, sulfur, yeah. uh, sulfur or copper um but with Casté for example you wouldn't need to go in the vineyard to, to spray so much it's uh, such a I think it's it. really interesting and it's one of those examples I, I know that um the Bordelais have uh, they have this reputation for um slightly kind of relying on the quality and people people know about Bordeaux's driving food but I think that's really unfair because the Bordeaux is so entrepreneurial and, and changing in in yeah. lots and lots of ways and I think 
the recent mm. on premier campaigns and just show how this is a this is constantly moving and adapting and I, I feel really excited hearing about the HVE and I know that that's now I think over 60 65 percent of vineyards in Bordeaux now have some sort of environmental HVE status which is yes HVE is, is getting bigger and bigger which is very good um for the environment because yeah. you know, it's not it's not only the vineyard it's everything around the vineyard it's recycling the the water uh, the rainwater um so we only use uh rainwater to clean the the, the machines the, the tractors yeah. or the tools um and it's recycling this rainwater to reuse it uh and it's yeah, it's reused yeah. i think it's brilliant to hear about that as well because it's all well and good uh, to hear about people doing it in um super super premium wines such as kind of such as Palmer, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. the, there's a little bit more um, flexibility to be able to afford to do that. But when you're when there's people who are doing it in um, in vineyards who aren't making so much, you know, on, on on a bottle or anything like that, and they're really putting themselves out there to try and make these environmental changes, mm -hmm. it speaks of uh, of a real movement happening in the region, which I think is really exciting. And I know that there's been um, in I think since I think it was 2000 and I think in 2008 there was they, they, they measured the reduction in carbon emissions as a result of the changing viticultural practices and the carbon emissions had reduced by about eight percent I think um, yes and uh, it, it's continually continually uh, going down which is uh, very good for Bordeaux um so yeah, you know we're really... very pleased with that very pleased with that and you know every day we are, we are making new new um uh new uh we, oh, we gosh. Are... Got some questions have popped up new inventions and all right that. so someone someone's asked if it is a flower day um and do you think it makes a difference for tasting this is the, the kind of lunar calendar of fruit flower and other days um what i believe is that uh, there are days where wines are showing much better than others mm -hmm. uh, other days i mean uh, and um i i i like to believe that on the fruit day we taste better than uh on the uh, root uh, day for example um and i it's you know we uh, is it is it because of uh, is it because of uh, the wine? Is it because of the uh, the, the the moon? The the, the, the everything? I I, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> why exactly, but I I can we can you can do tests at home. You Absolutely. can open a bottle for a few days in a row, and you'll see sometimes it's going to taste better than others. And it's actually an interesting question. I haven't looked if it's a fruit day, but uh, today it's showing well. I think it's showing very nicely. So we must assume if it's not a fruit day, then it's just an excellent wine, I think, Max. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> so another question. Um, what's the filtration process for Argadon? Uh, so we uh, we do uh, filter um, Argadas. Uh, so it's only with... Uh, um, it, we don't use so it, we don't use any um, egg whites or albumin de Boisson. Uh, we use only uh, a filtration with uh, uh, it's a chemical which is uh, doesn't have any effect on the wine, so it is also suitable for vegans. But mm -hmm. we uh, I don't know if we put it on the on the label actually. We put it on the most recent vintages uh, that is suitable for vegan. Mm -hmm. but, um, so yeah. Is that something that you're doing in response to consumer demand or something which you were just? Yes, that's, uh, um, uh, that's what we, we uh, well, that's, well, that's what we've always done at Agadas, but mm -hmm. we put it on the label because of the demand. People mm -hmm. like to know if it's suitable or be for vegan or not. Yeah. And we thought, well, putting on the label really helps everybody and doesn't do any harm. I think it's certainly something which is becoming more, it's, a, it's definitely a trend, um, isn't it? Yeah, 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 for sure. sure. And what about sulphur? I know there's a lot of talk from, uh, particularly in France, about low sulphur wines. Is that something you're consciously trying to reduce or is it something you're not worried about? Uh, no, 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 we are very uh, worried about um, uh, the sulphur. We are, 
um, producing with, uh, well, actually the 18 and the 19, that we didn't add any sulfur. Really? So it's the, only natural. The Chateau Argonne's red? Yeah, only natural yeah. sulfur. Um, however, uh, we are being very cautious. We are being very careful. Uh, Testing the tanks uh, daily and just making sure. Yes, exactly. Uh, because uh, making uh, wines without any sulfur can be tricky. Mm -hmm. But today we have the experiment. We know that we can do it um, only with perfect, perfect berries. Mm -hmm. So um, we know we won't be able to produce uh, non-sulfur wines uh, on every single vintage because sometimes you, you need to add a, a bit of sulfur. Yeah, but when you have a perfect vintage with very clean berries, it's actually quite uh, easy to, to, to produce. When I say easy, you have to be very careful in the <laughs> cellar with the bottling and all that. And uh, it's, it's, it is I'll a tell you why, work. Maker, you said that. It's, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it is possible, it is possible. But you That's know what, my, the winemaker, so we, we've done experiments in the, you know, it's been, well, maybe five years and the winemaker said oh well, we're doing experiments but it's not going to work it's not going to work and he was he couldn't believe it he so he said okay we're going to only select the perfect perfect berries to produce yeah. uh non-sulfide uh, added wines and and we tasted after a few months six months a year a year and a half and he just couldn't believe it so do you think that it made a difference to how the final wine tasted? Uh, yes, I think so. Yes. Uh, I think the, the fruit expression is very different, especially at the beginning. Uh, it's much, oh, it's a, it's, you know, it's a fruit bomb. More to pure? Me, or, okay. Yeah, more, more pure, I would say. More okay, pure. that's really and, um, uh, and So it's a different expression, and I think... We could, uh, okay, I think we could uh, actually taste it blind. Interesting. Uh, and really well, who say, knows? That sounds like we know what the future will look like if you have, if we continue to have good vintages. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, Max, um, we've we've just gone past call to pass, and I'm conscious that I'm sure bellies are rumbling on the call. Yeah. Um, and you also have a very early start, so I won't keep you. But can I say? on behalf of everyone. For starters, if anyone has any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email and I will pass it on to Max and get back to you. Um, but on behalf of everyone at Private Cellar and Max, it's been such a great pleasure having so many of you on and really appreciate it. And I hope you have enjoyed the Max, I hope you've enjoyed the wines and the opportunity to enjoy the wines with Max. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Lexi. It's uh, it's been a while. I haven't uh, done a a, a Zoom, uh, and it's always the beginning is always a bit uh, strange to talk to, uh, to a camera. But um, I'm I'm so happy to do it again because you know it's not a, you know it's also better for the environment. You know, Absolutely, uh, avoid, no, it does make a difference. A, Absolutely, uh, planes and all that. Even though I hope to meet you all uh, one day in Bordeaux or in in uh, in England. Well, I think maybe we could all get open yeah. a nice big bottle of the um, Argadons Blanc and you can cook us all some pasta, maybe, Max. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do okay. that at the shuttle. Well, all the best and thank you again. And cheerio, everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.